We got a new critter here at the camp and it happens to be one of my favorite type of turtle species. Uh, there's Lobo. Lobo's doing good. What's up Lobo? Hello. And there's Mama. There she is. She's doing a good job of Lobo. But let me show you guys what we got here. A uh, nice family drove all the way down from Cincinnati, Ohio, and they brought this big gal to us here at the camp. This is, of course, a common snapping turtle that spent her entire life in an 80-gallon tank. Now, she was found uh, dropped by a bird of prey into a coal factory, into a, some coal dust, and the gentleman who brought her to us actually was, uh, he saved her, and she was hatchling size, and my goodness, she's big. Here, check this out, Mom. Would you hold this while I lift yeah. her up? Check it out, everybody. Now, with snapping turtles, you hold them from the back of the carapace, right like this. Oh, she's a big girl. She's never missed a meal, it looks like. Oh, there she is. She hasn't missed a meal. She's pretty nervous right now. Lobo, so doesn't Lobo. Know, Lobo doesn't know what to think either, but this is a big snapper. And these are some of my favorite turtles. This is one of the first turtles I ever kept as a young lad. And I love common snapping turtles. They are awesome. They can be found as far north as Nova Scotia all the way into Central America and west to Colorado. Uh, they are incredible. So today what I thought we'd do is we'd learn a little bit about this turtle, hang out with this turtle, and then let her go in the rec pond for a little while. But what I'd like to do is I would like her to live in the new Cayman Creek. I think she would be a cool addition to be living in there with the Cayman, because she's tough and they won't really mess with her, but look at her just craning that neck around. She's cool. What should we name her? She's a little hefty in the rear end, aren't you, La? My goodness, what a big, fat and happy turtle. I think she's going to do good down here in sunny South Florida. Uh, this is, of course, the common snapping turtle, Chilidra serpentina. And that's because they have that long neck right there. How many of you guys have kept snapping turtles? Um, they are very common, uh, but they get less and less common nowadays. Lobo doesn't know what to think of this big girl, huh? But my goodness, I love it, man. I am so happy. And uh, Peyton, I'm giving you a shout out. Here's your girl, Peyton. She was the nice young lady whose dad actually uh, donated this big snapper to us here at the camp. And they said they would watch TV with it. It would just kind of hang out on their lap and watch TV. Let's watch her walk. I want her to kind of walk around and get some exercise. Hi, this is going? really cool. Where are you going? I don't know. She's going right at me. Nah, she's just hobbling away. She's just... She likes me. My Hi. goodness. Now, again, guys, she's very, very heavy. So we're going to put her on the Camp Kennan diet. She's going to be eating some fish and natural foods. And she's been just kind of, this is a good opportunity for me to see what she's like and how healthy she is, you know? I literally just got her today. So she's looking and she's starting to see. There's the, the water. Go ahead in there, girl. Gonna I'm going to follow her in. Yeah, she'll be fine. A little bit chilly. Let's get in there and see how she's doing. Ah, it's so good to be back here in the Aquascape Wreck Pond with one of my favorite turtle species. Snappers live a very aquatic lifestyle and creep along the bottoms of most every type of aquatic habitat throughout their range. They even enter brackish waters. Here, she's just getting used to the rocky sides of the pond that we have at the camp. And I've got to tell you, this gal certainly isn't shy. She seems to be really curious about the camera. Those big powerful claws enable her to climb up, rip food, and actually burrow into the mud when she needs to. As always, the African cichlids are extremely curious, but look out, fish are on the menu. Now these turtles can spend up to an hour under the water, 
and even longer if they don't move. In fact, they can spend months at a time under the ice in northern habitats where they hibernate. And if it's just warm enough, you may see them moving underneath the ice. Quick breath of fresh air, and she's back to exploring her new digs. Let's go check out some of the other inhabitants that we haven't seen in a little while here at the camp. <laughs> There's the big female Batagra finis, the Royal River Terrapin. This gal is about 80 pounds. And she's not quite as, well, she's a little bit more shy than our current snapping turtle. She wants to get away from me as fast as possible. And look, down there, it's the other male. There are two males and one female Batagra finis in the pond, and there are also two male Fly River turtles. And I think they may just be lurking, oh, I don't know, probably right there. <laughs> How cool are they, huh? They like to stay put during the day, but at night you come out here with a flashlight, the whole pond is alive with them swimming around looking for food. You'll notice I don't have very many lilies left. All right, let's see what our snapping turtle's up to. And where'd our gal go? Not too far, it seems. She's still underneath the deck. What must she think about this new place after living in a tank her whole life? Let's help her out a little bit. Come on, little one. Let me just give you a little push. There you go. And let's see if she swims. And I don't think she's going to swim much. She'll probably just sink like a rock. <laughs> no problem. Like I said, they like to spend a lot of time wandering around the bottom of their habitats, looking for food, just feeling around, and they're really, really quite interesting. She seems a little bit more curious about us, huh? Now their Latin name, Chalidra serpentina, actually means snake-like swamp thing. And they are definitely a swamp-dwelling animal. These guys are awesome. They get algae on their shells, they really blend into their habitats, and they're ambush predators. They'll snap out with that long, long neck, and they can catch a fish, smaller turtles, insects, mammals, birds, anything they can overpower in their aquatic habitats, they will eat. They'll even eat carrion. That long neck also comes in very handy when they're trying to take a breath while remaining cryptic and hidden. They can just get their nostrils up while the rest of their body is safely submerged under the water. And just look at what an incredible body they have. Perfectly designed. These guys look truly prehistoric. It almost looks like she's smiling at us. Another little known fact is when they're in the water, they can actually be quite calm and gentle. In fact, sometimes you could even step on them and not even know it. They won't snap. If you get them out of the water, they feel threatened and they live up to their namesake. This girl also benefits having been raised by a family. She's definitely tame. Oh, she seems to like a little scratching. I love it. A tame snapping turtle here at the camp. That is awesome. And like I said, she's a little chubby.
really, really cool to be in the water with uh, a common snapping turtle. I used to catch these as a kid in Long Island. They were quite common. And I guess the reason I love them so much is because they look like dinosaurs. They look more like dragons than turtles. I always used to think they were an ankylosaur, you know, just this long tail. They've got the bony protrusions on their scales. There's, um, it's just incredible, incredible uh, design to this animal, you know. I mean, the, the scalation, the, the kind of spikes on the tail, and just their overall armored appearance is really impressive. And they just look prehistoric. So I love these turtles. And it's interesting, most of the time we see these turtles with algae all over them. They're very disguised, but this animal's grown up inside uh, its whole life. And it's got just the cleanest skin. I mean, just one season out here in South Florida and she's gonna have algae growing on her. Um, also, you'll notice the shell is somewhat flattened. Uh, she's got immense weight. So she, being in a tank her whole life, it doesn't, does kind of flatten out those shells. I've seen that a lot in captive snapping turtles. So it is something that happens to them uh, in captivity. But I think she's a beautiful specimen. I think it's just really cool to be uh, able to care for her. And what I want to do now is I'm going to let her do her thing and we're going to take a walk over. We're going to go ahead and take a walk over to Cayman Creek. Um, and I want to show you what I, what I think would be really cool for her. Okay, so there's been some changes, well, not real changes, but some more uh, work that has to be done to Cayman Creek. Obviously, I haven't planted anything yet, but look at this, the water's already clear. It is awesome, man. This is beautiful. Uh, really, really nice, clean water. And I gotta tell you, it cleared up literally overnight. Uh, once we started the creek up. So what I'm thinking is, is that our new snapping turtle can live in here. Now the dwarf caiman are gonna be up in this section and I think this would be the perfect pool for that turtle. I think she would be very, very happy there. So that's probably what's gonna happen. She'll be able to wander around, go in this tool, uh, pool rather. Uh, but then again, who knows? Maybe I'll put her in with the bigger ones. Um, they can't hurt her. They wouldn't bother her. They have snapping turtles where they're at now at Fred's house. So I don't know. I just think this would be a really cool, uh, you know, little addition to this beautiful enclosure. Um, I've taken the soil and I've pushed it up a little bit because when we do our fence, we're going to bring it back and bury the chain link that comes out as an apron. Uh, that's as per fish and wildlife rules. So I got a lot of work to do. We got a lot of plants to plant. But uh, in the meantime, you know, that's what's going on. So let's go rejoin this little lady in the pond. It really is a marvel for me to sit here and just take these videos because she is amazing. She really is interested in this new world she finds herself in. I can't wait to have her in the new Cayman Creek. So let me know what you guys think of her, and I'll see you all next time. Thanks for watching.